Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're gonna have a look at some very core concepts for rigging and animating. We're gonna be talking about forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. These are two methods for rigging and animating characters, or anything really. Both have advantages and disadvantages, and sometimes you'll use both to bring something to life. Understanding how these systems work and when you might want to use one or the other will make rigging and animating anything much simpler. The practical examples we're gonna look at will all be made in After Effects, and while you'll see some third-party plugins at work, don't worry, the concepts we talk about here will be applicable to many, many systems. With that out of the way, let's move forward with the tutorial. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Design, photography, illustration, film, all great classes taught by experts at the top of their craft. I'm all about having a strong foundation, and for animation, our foundation in the process should be the storyboard. So I would really recommend you check out Storyboarding for Animation by Sarah Beth Morgan. Her course takes you through the whole process of this very vital step with a focus on narrative and development with a very clear process. If you find you're struggling with the early pre-production phases of animation, definitely check out her course. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers who click on the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So big thanks to Skillshare for helping out the channel. And now let's get on with the kinematics. Forward kinematics is the more basic of the two, so let's start there. From a theoretical stance, that means the end of a system can be located and computed from the angle and length of the parts of that system. In more practical terms, it means the hand bone is parented to the forearm, the forearm is parented to the bicep, and the bicep is parented to the shoulder. This forms a hierarchical chain from parent down to child. As the parent moves, it takes the children with it. This is how a robot tends to operate, setting the angle of each joint to move the end of the chain to a specific place. In After Effects, we can parent one one layer to another using the parenting options on the layers. In this robot arm example, you could see that the parts further down the chain are parented back up and so on and so on. If you're doing this, make sure that you move all of the anchor points of these limb components to be in the middle center of the joint you want them to hinge at. To animate such a system, we just set keyframes on the rotation of each of the parts. In a forward kinematic system like this one, we have individual control over all of the parts of the system. So we can set a heap of keyframes for the various positions we need this rigged up arm to get into. One thing that's very nice about this kind of thing is that we can very easily offset the keyframes to make it feel like this is being either led by the extremity or led by the origin. We can then really easily manage those keyframes by maybe stretching them out, moving them around. If you select a bunch of keyframes and hold Alt or Option, then you can drag out the last one or the first one, kind of stretch and compress these. And as you can see, we're able to get some lovely, interesting, nuanced motion from simple rearrangements of these easy eased keyframes. So on the one hand, we have have very granular control. But on the flip side is that we have to do a lot of manual control. Often though, these systems use fewer parts. These rigs can literally be made without any extra pieces or control layers or systems at all. That makes them very light on your machine. We typically see this employed to make kind of mechanical type characters or mechanical type systems. Another advantage is that all the parts of an FK system are moving in arcs, which is automatically very pleasing if we go back to our basics of animation. However, if you wanted to make an end point move in a line, <laughs> that's it's going to be a little bit tricky. So yes, we have arcs, but we kind of only have arcs. So that's a lot of manual work. Wouldn't it be great if we could just move the end of the system and have all the other parts adjust accordingly? Like it's kind of the uh, inverse relationship, hence the name, I guess. Instead of worrying about what specific angle every joint is in the system, we would only worry about controlling it using things called goals and constraints. These are kind of the key components of an IK system. Now, at the time of recording, After Effects does not come with IK out of the box. Maybe you'd like a system that makes arms and legs out of a single shape layer. Maybe try limber then. Uh, maybe you would like some kind of noodly looking arms, then rubber hose might be for you. Maybe you'd like an entire suite of character tools with bones and constraints and other bells and whistles. Can I interest you in a duic? It's also free. Uh, maybe eye expressions from Mamo World, or maybe character tool from Motion Design School. There are many of them to choose from with many features, but I want to talk about what makes all IK systems similar. What do they all have in common? Let's have a look at this example using Limber. The goals here you can see are the bright, 
control layers here. These are set as guide layers by the plugin so that they can be seen and moved, but they won't be rendered. As we move these goals, the rest of the limb adjusts between them based on the rules that we've set up inside the system. This can be very useful since we only have to worry about the position of these end goals. IK works kind of like how organic systems tend to work. When we move our appendages in 3D space towards goals and everything kind of coordinates to make that happen given the limits of the systems in between. Similarly, we can just move the goals anywhere we'd like. Or maybe we could just parent the goal to something already in motion, like the pedals of a bike. Pedals go around, the hips stay in the same place, and everything in between makes up the difference based on the rules and constraints of the system. But what are these rules? Well, how they're expressed will depend on the specific IK solution you're employing. Here in Limber, we have all these controls about limb length. This is similar to how bones work. We need to tell the system how long limbs are so they'll work right. And because it's also a system that creates limbs with a bunch of style controls, but very specifically down here, we have this bit about joint direction. Does the knee bend this way? Does it bend that way? Does the start or end controller align with the tangent of the limbs? This is handy for parenting a shoe or hand, for example. How about stretching? When the goal moves beyond the length, the total length of the limbs, what happens to the limb itself? And then we have something here called anti-popping, which means when we get close to a straight limb, is there some play in the joint to avoid the popping sensation you see when harsh mechanical systems try to emulate soft biological ones? My knee has been rebuilt a couple times, so I keep it smooth on extension. But because this fellow here is powered by points moving around, all these options help us define the rule set for this limb as these things are moving. Different IK systems will have different rules, options, and possibilities. Some options will be totally superfluous to your needs, and some may not have enough options. It's for this reason that an IK system can have a lot longer setup time. Many systems, you need to place bones and create a skeleton. These form the structure of an IK system that we then parent assets onto. Here I'm using Duic to make the bones. Then we set limits on how the joints will work with constraints or maybe forces. In a more complex system, you might have forces pushing or pulling, offering resistance. In 3D systems, it's really important to define kind of the angles and planes that something can twist and turn in. The human shoulder, for example, is incredibly complex in a realistic model because of the incredibly complex limits on rotation in the many axes that it plays in. And in a simple 2D system, we're usually just limiting the angles that something can rotate within. To kind of sum it all up, an IK system is going to use fewer keyframes to control these more complex movements. However, we're not going to have the manual fine control of the various elements of that system. It allows us to save a lot of time animating, but we spend a lot more time setting up the system. It can create fairly realistic movements, but it's going to require a lot of nuance and care when you're actually making use of moving the limited controllers around. And we often find it's most applicable for organic characters and organic movements. However, a discussion on this topic is not complete without acknowledging that the choice isn't a binary. Both FK and IK systems often coexist inside the same scene. Here's that early robot arm that we looked at, and now we're controlling it with an IK rig, but the potted plant and the little plants inside of it are being controlled with an FK rig. I wanted manual control over the hero object here so I could have nuanced control over the floops and flops as this thing moves around. And then how about this bike person from before? The legs are IK, the arms are IK. The pedals, though, are actually FK, and they're driving the whole situation with the feet. Cranks are connected to the chassis, the pedals are connected to the cranks, the shoes are connected to the pedals, and the goals of the legs are then connected to these shoes. And for what it's worth, the rotation of the pedals also drives the rotation of the flywheel. They're not connected or parented, but they're rigged together in this way that one is driving the other. Anytime you have one thing controlling another, this is a form of rigging. Some IK systems even allow you to blend within them. So back in Limber, you can fade between IK and FK control inside a limb, and you get the best of both worlds. It's definitely worth considering what options you may need, what level of granularity, what level of control do you actually need from your IK system before you commit to using one. Now, all of that is just a brief comparison so you can make better choices when you're considering rigging up your characters. Always think about what a character is actually going to do and how it will move, and then you'll know how you want to control that movement. And hopefully this will help you decide if FK or IK is going to be appropriate for the movement you want to make. If you've enjoyed this intro into rigging concepts, do let me know. We can definitely get into more of them and more advanced concepts or specific cases. Things like how do we rig actions like picking up and throwing, maybe a walk cycle, maybe some rigging of faces and mouths. Let me know and we'll try to make it happen. If you want more of these tutorials in your life, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single one. And if you have any questions or requests, get at me in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out. If you'd like to get at me about anything, I'm at EC Abrams all over the internet. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and I'm streaming on Twitch and Behance 
chance on the weekends if you're into this kind of thing, but longer and with way less structure. But that'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and I will see you around the internet.